This video is a brief refresher on how to perform a surface landmark guided paraspinous approach to lumbar puncture and spinal anesthesia in the lateral position. A good mental model of spinal anatomy and the geometrical principles involved is critical for success. See the links in the description for a definitive review article on the topic and other videos that demonstrate how to use ultrasound imaging to guide the paraspinous approach. We'll demonstrate the steps to performing a paraspinous spinal anesthetic in the lateral position using a 25 gauge needle with an introducer. Step 1. Identify the location of the spinous processes bordering a chosen interlaminar space. Begin by identifying the intercrystal line to locate the L3 spinous process. I like to place my left index finger on the superior margin of the iliac crest and then drop my thumb towards the midline. Next, use the index and middle fingers of your non-dominant hand to palpate the line of spinous processes. Right-handed practitioners will use their left index and middle fingers to palpate and fix the skin. Note that in the lateral patient position, the left hand should be rotated so that the fingertips are pointing to the right, and thus not obstructing the right hand in later steps. Start by keeping your two fingertips close together and roll them over the peaks that represent the tips of the spinous processes and into the intervening valleys of the interspinous spaces. The feeling of this can be replicated by rolling your fingers over the knuckles of your other hand. And having located a potential interspinous space, the fingertips are now spread to straddle the width of the spinous process. This maneuver is critical as it fixes and stabilizes the loose skin in place over the underlying bony landmarks and improves the precision of needle insertion through the skin towards the interlaminar space. Your fingers also serve as tactile and visual cues to the position of the spinous process, which is key to triangulating your needle trajectory. Step 2. Infiltrate the planned insertion site with local anesthetic and scout out an appropriate needle trajectory. The appropriate needle insertion point is close to the midline, 0.5 to 1 cm lateral, with only a small 5 to 10 degree lateral to medial angulation. This is why I call it a paraspinous rather than paramedian approach. But just as importantly, the needle insertion point must be in line with the superior edge of the lower spinous process, or in other words, in line with the lower end of the interspinous space. And start with little or no cranial angulation of the needle. And this will ensure that any initial bony contact will be with the lower lamina bordering the interspace rather than the upper lamina in which case incremental cranial redirection will inevitably walk the needle tip into the space. Infiltrate local anesthetic to anesthetize the skin and then insert the needle deeper and inject more local anesthetic to anesthetize the paraspinal muscles. Any firm resistance to needle advancement or local anesthetic injection indicates that the tip may be within the midline supraspinous or interspinous ligaments and that the trajectory is too close to the midline or the lateral to medial angle is too large. The infiltration needle can also be used to explore the area. Here my trainee exaggerates the lateral to medial angle to explore for bony contact with the lateral aspect of the spinous process. This establishes the upper limit of the lateral to medial angle and signals that the appropriate trajectory should be somewhere between this angle and perpendicular to the skin. Once an appropriate initial trajectory has been scouted out, it's useful to leave the infiltration needle in place as a guide. It's essential to re-identify the location of the spinous processes and fix the overlying skin with the second and third fingers of your non-dominant hand as you exchange the infiltration needle for the introducer needle. Insert this at the same 5 to 10 degree lateral to medial angle but start at 90 degrees to the coronal plane. Once the introducer needle is seated in the paraspinal muscle, fixation of the overlying skin is no longer necessary. Hold the introducer hub from below as that will not obstruct your view of the needle and will also prevent you from inadvertently flattening the lateral to medial angle. Insert the spinal needle with control and pay attention to the tactile feedback from the tip. The soft feel of muscle is followed by either the rubbery resistance of ligamentum flavum or bony contact. If bone is contacted, withdraw the spinal needle into the introducer and adjust the trajectory of the introducer cranially. Keep the lateral to medial angle constant and unchanged. Only change direction in one axis, the cranial caudal axis. These redirections must be small and incremental as shown here. 
The left hand controlling the introducer needle is the aiming hand. The right hand merely advances or withdraws the spinal needle in a straight line. Repeat these steps as needed. Needle withdrawal, cranial redirection, and reassertion, until you feel the needle tip slip off bone and advance deeper into the rubbery resistance of ligamentum flavum. Keep advancing through flavum in a stepwise fashion, withdrawing the stylet intermittently, or if a paresthesia is elicited, to check for CSF backflow that will signify dural puncture. The eventual cranial angle for success will depend on how wide the interlaminar spaces are and the location of your initial skin insertion point in relation to the lamina. Note that the lateral to medial angle remains unchanged from the original 5 to 10 degrees. This second video illustrates the same process but using a 22 gauge needle without an introducer. All the steps and principles are the same. The spinous processes are located by palpation and this determines the needle insertion site. The skin infiltration needle is used to anesthetize the deeper muscle and explore the spinal needle trajectory. The spinal needle is inserted close to the midline at the same small lateral to medial angle of 5 to 10 degrees and without much of any cranial angulation initially. The difference compared to using an introducer is in the handling of the 22 gauge needle. The entire needle has to be carefully manipulated to ensure that the redirections are small and controlled and that the needle is always traveling in a straight line as it is moved in and out of the patient. I've discussed the nuances of spinal needle handling in another video. If bone is contacted, small systematic and controlled cranial redirections should be made until the needle encounters the characteristic resistance of ligamentum flavum. Further advancement will result in dural puncture.